So there are oscillators. Uh, what do oscillators do? Right? They attempt to define what is overbought and oversold. Now, I would, those words in of themselves are words that create beliefs about what's possible. Right? So if I tell all of you that IBM is oversold, what thought does that produce? Right? You're going to buy it. Right? Or it should stop moving lower at that point. But how many times have we seen prices move to a point where defined by an oscillator that it is oversold and it does not move up? And so we have to question the validity of that thought or those words. There are trend lines. They attempt to define trend direction, right? trend changes and support and resistance. And we're going to look at that, a few charts of those. Moving averages, again, attempt to define trend Direction, trend changes, support, and resistance. Fibonacci analysis. This is where we're getting into a little bit more of the esoteric type of analysis here. Now, now we're moving into finding that holy grail or that guarantee with this type of analysis. Define support and resistance, trend changes, price movements as they relate to a sequence of numbers. That's what Fibonacci analysis is. It's looking at price movement either through a sequence of numbers, how many bars in a row of prices move, or at defined areas of retracement. And then there's candlestick analysis. Right? We're looking at reversal points, right? giving us visual pictures and shifts in momentum between buyers and sellers. So what we're going to do is look at all of these, and I'm going to go through some examples so that you understand what they're doing and what their limitations are.